everyone, this is Barrett with Espresso Outlet. Today I am roasting on the Kaleido M1. This is the, it's probably about the most simple Kaleido roaster that we sell. It's about 200 grams and it comes with the Kaleido tablet. So the Kaleido system is this tablet right here and it has the entire interface built into the tablet. So it's really easy to use once you get used to it. It might be a little bit intimidating at first. Uh, going through a couple of things, we have our time that'll start as soon as we hit the beans in button. We have our BT that stands for bean temperature. So there's actually a probe in the front that the beans are rolling through and that's going to tell us the temperature of the beans. We have our exhaust temperature, which is another probe in the back that's measuring the fan and the exhausts. They call it smoke. And then we have our ROR, that stands for rate of rise. And that's how many degrees per minute the beans are changing. Uh, target temp today, I've set it 200. Every time I plug it in, it defaults to 220. You can actually change your default under the setup. But today, we're just gonna start with 200. I've noticed on some of the larger roasters, if I do over, if, I do, if you do the 220, it's gonna be way too hot, most of the time. So I usually like to start at about 200 to 190, 180, depending on the bean style and the roaster itself. Every roaster is a little bit different, um, but I feel like this M1 does pretty good ab about the 200 degree charge temp. We also have some controls. They call it fire, that's your heat, and that's in percent. You have your smoke, that's your exhaust, and it's a fan. And you can hear it kind of going up and down in the background and then you have your roller i usually like to have mine at 100 at all times so i went ahead and preloaded about 180 grams of these good brothers robusta seasoning beans and these are really great to learn on they're easy to roast they're fairly forgiving you can go a little bit dark uh, it's probably not going to be something that you want to make like a espresso with it's more of put it in your regular coffee pot and brew some regular coffee with it. Uh, before we get started, make sure that your door is shut and lashed into place. And also check your chaff chamber because a lot of times I'll forget and then it, it starts smoking about part of the way through the roast. So last you have your little bean trier. It has an arrow. Make sure that it's pointed in the down position and make sure that your charge temp is set. So if you're wanting to preheat this, there's a button that says temp matching alarm. If you click that, once it reaches the temperature, it's gonna start beeping, you can click it and it'll turn it off. To load a curve, I've actually have a curve loaded in the background. If we were gonna auto roast, it would follow this curve. But since we're gonna do a manual roast, I just want to load this as reference. So you can click this load curve and you can select the curve and select load. Since it's already loaded, it didn't change. But that's a pretty nice thing to have as a reference. At the end of the roast, we can click the save curve and that'll save a separate curve on top of this. So since we're roasting in manual today, um, maybe we'll wanna save it. Let's start by dumping the beans. I usually look at the top to make sure that there's not like one little green bean getting stuck. And then we're gonna click the beans in button. This is very important because that starts the roast itself. So if you don't hit the beans in, your graph won't trend. It won't show the progress as it roasts. So it takes approximately seven to 10 minutes usually to do a roast. It depends on the beans and how aggressive you are with the roast. Every type of bean you're gonna to wanna to roast a little bit different, but I've found that this roast profile works very well for I'd say the majority of the beans that I've been roasting lately. These are super forgiving. We're not trying to get any crazy flavors out of them. So to keep going, what we're in right now is what's called the drying stage. And once we hit, I, I like to go about a minute to two minutes. On this roaster, I've been running almost two minutes on the drying. We're about a minute and a half, and they're beginning to yellow a little bit. Let's just pull one out and set it on the table. Oops, lost one. Let's 
we'll kind of track the progress as we go through. So I'm going to go ahead and click dry end. We're at about a minute and 50 seconds. They are beginning to yellow just a little bit. And we're not going into like the true mallarding, but we're definitely going to start increasing the bean temperature. Uh, right now we're at about 140 degrees Celsius on the bean temperature. This roast seems to be going a little bit faster. I think it's because I've roasted a couple and um, had it nice and hot when we started. So it's really been quite easy to get some very nice roasts out of this roaster. I've been roasting some lighter roasts. And what I like about it is you have the trier, so you can pull them out and you can have a bean. And you're really not going to be surprised. Like with my Gene Cafe, you had the glass and the glass kind of made it a little bit difficult to see, a little bit difficult to hear the cracking. And it might be a little bit difficult to see, but I can definitely tell that the, the beans are beginning to yellow, which is what we're looking for in this phase of the roast for about three minutes and 45 seconds. Okay, I wanna make a note right now, we're at about seven minutes. And you can hear the beans are beginning to pop. That's our first crack. It kind of pops like popcorn. Uh, I'm setting a couple beans aside and we will look at them at the very end, but we're starting to hit that first crack. I'm taking them and we're gonna compare them at the very end, but we wanna hit that first crack start on our screen. And we did it about seven minutes and 30 seconds. And at this point, once the first crack starts, when we hit that button, it's gonna have this development and percentage. And that's gonna tell us about how dark our beans are and how developed they're getting. So I'm gonna to wanna to drop these at about 200 degrees. That's what's been working well for me. And right now we're at 190. So at this point, I'm really using this trier a lot. Hopefully you guys can hear the, the cracking going on in the background. And we're at 198 degrees. I'm probably gonna drop these. I've been doing about 205, and I'm sure that these beans would be fine at that, but, oops, trying to save a few. Yeah, definitely let's drop them. So to drop them, what we want to do is click this cooling switch. And we're at 205, so they got hot very fast. And the drum itself has little augers in it that pushes the beans out really fast, which is really awesome. And I like to have a spoon. The newer ones come with a spoon. This is actually my roasting spoon that I've had for a long time. And you'll really want to agitate these beans. We just lost a few. Because we want to cool these beans down as fast as we can. You can, if you just let them set and you don't stir them. I've actually had some in the front just really keep roasting and all that heat. And I'll actually get some that had gone into second crack at the very end. So not something that we want. We want to cool these down as fast as we can. Usually at a room temperature in about a minute. They are still cooking right now. They are still, they're not full on roasting. I keep losing some beans. Uh, they're not full on roasting, but they are still having heat in them. So that's adding some heat to the beans that we don't necessarily want. We want the roast to completely end. Uh, we'll go ahead and click the beans out button. We forgot to do that. Usually right when I drop it, I'll hit the beans out. And the reason why we do that 
is it puts uh, notes on our graph. We're gonna use the back end of this. Okay, so there's your first roast on this Kaleido M1. We've let these cool. We've used our spoon to agitate these. You can shake it, but still I like to churn them. This uh, smaller cup on the M1, it's a little bit small, but it definitely holds the entire amount. This is the full, pretty much full capacity. I went 280 instead of, or 180 instead of 200. But you can tell they're pretty evenly roasted. I think this one has a little bit of chaff on it. Looks a little bit light, but that's a nice even roast. And I said I was pulling them out as we roasted. I think this is pretty cool representation of the beans. So this is green out of the package. Didn't even go into the roaster. Uh, these were just during the drying. And then as we started to go into some of these mallarding phases, uh, you're starting to get some of that dark or it's turning from yellow to brown, so it's starting to darken quite a bit. And then at the end, we're going into more of like our caramelline phase. So this is where we dropped it. This is a cooled bean at the very end. And this was probably about 200 degrees, and this was probably about 205. So a little bit makes a big difference. But that's pretty much about a minute apart through the whole roast. Uh, these were a little bit close together. These were pretty close together, but you kind of get the idea. I think it's kind of a cool representation. So if you're thinking about this M1, I'd say it's pretty easy to use. Uh, it takes a little bit to get going. Uh, the first time that I used it, there wasn't very good documentation out there. So that's why I'm making documentation. The tablet itself, you just kind of click through the buttons. I really don't find it that difficult to use. Uh, the main tablet is in degrees Celsius, so I recommend getting a Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion. As a lot of the graphs that you'll get from roasters, they will be in degrees Fahrenheit. So, if you have any questions, drop them below. Uh, we're going to do some more on this M6, the large one, and this M2 as well. I should have an M10 that I'll be playing with here pretty soon. So make sure to subscribe and check back. Thank you guys for watching.